He has wiped out by his grace through faith in Christ your every sin, every sin, past, present, future. Christian hedonist is somebody who says that my greatest joy, my greatest good is God. And therefore, I will pursue that joy and I will pursue that God above all else. So God's glorified and I'm satisfied. You are now listening to the Pastor Discussions Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 44 of the Pastor Discussions Podcast. I'm John. I'm Joe, and this is your weekly conversation on doctrine of faith and the Christian life. And And, I don't know. I just always, I recognize I always say that and (laughs) just just leaving everybody hanging. One of these times I'm going to say my, my spiel, my, like our, our thing that we say every time. And I'm going to go right into the next thing. (laughs) Interrupt each other. (laughs) Not going to know what to do with that. (laughs) Oh man. We're part of the Bark Podcast Network. You can find out. Uh, about them and get more awesome biblical content for your ear holes at the barpodcast.com and also check out resurrection <laughs> coffee co <laughs> resurrection coffee co.com uh, and support uh church plant in Avondale, Chicago and drink some great coffee at the same time. What's up, man? It's Friday. It's Friday. But for us, it's Monday for everybody else. It's Monday y'all. I need oh, to, yeah. we need to change oh, that. Yeah. Right. We need to do that in the intro. <laughs> it's Monday, y'all. <laughs> oh man. How's your Everyone, week? It's good. It's been it's been a long one, but it's been good. Yeah. So that's good. Ready for a visit. My brother from Texas is gonna be here this next week. So oh, we'll nice. see. They had a they had a little one uh, just a couple months ago. Do so. you wanna go out shooting? Um, I, I should ask. I bet, should. He, I bet he would. I'm going to go so. shooting with him. I'll see how good he is. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's a border patrol agent. So he, I'm assuming he uses his yeah. gun. So. Yeah. Well, he, last time he was here, we went out to, to dinner with you guys and he was telling us about all the gear they carry. Yeah. And I was nerding out on that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, so man, we are, we are excited about today's podcast. Yeah. So and next week's podcast. Yeah. So we, uh, a lot of you probably have seen this or know this or have watched it, but new movie came out. Yeah. John nerded about it. Uh, what was it? Was it a Friday? You sent me. Like, I've been this- following this for a long time. Okay. Like I saw this on Facebook coming out. Like I saw the, the teaser trailer and I was like, Oh, that looks good. Anything that has Paul Washer in it. I'm kind of a sucker for, but uh, I was like, Oh man, that looks good. And uh, it, it just sort of like, I, I like the page and just hadn't heard anything for a while. And so finally started seeing stuff about the release of this movie. So we were pretty pumped about it. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, earlier this week we watched, um, the movie American gospel as a staff. Um, we just took some time and sat down and watched it. And we, uh, I, I don't know why we were watching it. Did you reach out to yeah. this? Yeah. yeah. So while we were while, watching it, <laughs> it just messaged him on Facebook. <laughs> like, Hey, you want to be on the show? So we got a chance, uh, to, <laughs> wow we are pros <laughs> we got a chance to talk <laughs> with brandon who is the director uh of the movie american gospel and just uh sit down and talk with him about why he wanted to do this movie and what it was about and um just get his heart behind it so it's a good conversation it was a good conversation you're gonna hear that today and then next week we're joined by the joe marino yeah. So we're going to have to figure out a way to distinguish between Joe and Joe, but uh, you're Joseph. That's right. That's what it is. You're Joseph. <laughs> thanks, Donnie. Yeah, thanks, Donnie. That's from you. Shout out to Donnie. <laughs> uh, so yeah, next week we're going to be uh, having Marino on the show and we're going to, he, he watched the movie as well. And we're, we're just going to talk about takeaways, things that, that we noticed from the show or from the movie um, and, and just talk about the movie a little bit with, I, I guess you can kind of, there are no spoilers because we all know what the, Never mind. Not everybody knows what the gospel is. That's kind of the point of the movie. Yeah. So uh, enjoy this uh, interview with Brandon, who's the director of American Gospel. And that was a weird. These are, we're off today. Something's not. Something's not. We're not firing on all it's, cylinders. It's also like it's in the afternoon. It's yeah. Kind of like that sleepy time. It's after lunch. So note to self, always record in the morning. <laughs> anyway, enjoy this interview with Brandon, the director of American Gospel. 
All right. Well, we are here with uh, Brandon and Brandon is the um, director. Is that right? Yes. The director of a new film that we're really excited about. Uh, we just watched it as a staff. We had a staff professional development day, I guess you could I was, call it. I find it funny. Like somebody commented on your picture that I was, I was on my computer on a Google doc. And yeah. I thought I was <laughs> shopping online. You're on, on Amazon. A, yeah. So this is what we do in pastoral ministry. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just yeah. Amazon and watch TV. Um, anyway. Yeah. We, we watched this, uh, this film uh, called American gospel, which just released what, like last week. Is that right? Yes. Last week. And Man, we, we are excited about it. So we have Brandon, the director here. So Brandon, why don't you go ahead and just uh, take a couple of minutes, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the the film. Just kind of give us a 30,000 foot flyover about what it's about. Sure. Um, my name's Brandon Kimber. I'm a husband, father of three, almost four, uh, another one due in January. Um, I, I live in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I grew up uh, in the Word of Faith, NAR doctrine, uh, and I'm a documentary filmmaker. So how did, how did you get into uh, doing documentary films? Is this your first one? This is my third. Your third, okay. What are the other two that you've done? They're both crime documentaries. The first was called... A Murder in the Park, and that's on Netflix right now. And the second it was called White Boy. Oh, is that about the about, uh, informer? That like the the FBI informant kid? Yeah, White Boy Rick. Yeah, I've heard I heard about him. I, they were making a movie about him or something, right? Yeah, they just released a version, a Hollywood version with Matthew McConaughey as he plays the father. That's where I saw it. That's really cool. Is that one available on Netflix to you? Uh, that's on iTunes okay. and Amazon, but not Netflix at the moment. Right on. So how did you get into, how did you get into documentary filmmaking? What made you want to do that? Yeah, well, I grew up just, um, playing with video cameras and I guess I, it all started. I worked at a pool and I started making documentaries about staff life, turned into these three and a half hour epics. <laughs> um, and then right after, well, I guess I can't skip college. I went to college um, and studied film production. Um, after that, I got a job right out of college. And I that was in 2009. And I am still working at the same job. Uh, here at uh, Transition Studios, we started doing... Uh, crime, crime Stoppers Television, and we would basically do half-hour episodes for our local television programs where we do unsolved homicides, and it was kind of a local America's Most Wanted type of show. We were looking for tips to solve cases, and that expanded um, to different cities around the country, uh, Miami, Florida, Los Angeles, Chicago. And once we got to the Chicago show, we met a, an attorney who told us a story about the case that is the first subject of our film, A Murder in the Park, which was actually uh, it's pretty unbelievable. I can go into that later, but that was our first film. And after that was successful, uh, my boss basically said, hey, you can... I'm going to let you do a passion project and that's how American gospel started. So tell us a little bit um, before we talk about the movie, just about your experience in the word of faith movement and in the, just maybe how you uh, were in that to start with and maybe um, how you wound up coming out of that into, uh, and then that'll kind of lead us into talking about the movie. Sure. Well, I grew up in a Christian home. My parents were both um, born again Christians. Um, growing up, I heard their their testimonies all the time about, you know, my mother was 
crazy drug drug addict. She would tell us she did every drug. If you can think of it, I I did that drug. She was an alcoholic. Uh, her mother died when she was 16, and it all kind of came to a crisis point where she found Jesus and was radically changed. Um, my father was an atheist and kind of experimented in Buddhism, um, and he also... Uh, through the death of his mother and sister, uh, came to Christ. Um, so I grew up with these stories and in the church, and I I guess I kind of, <laughs> I, I was a victim of probably very weak or shallow theology. Um, I, The church that we attended probably until I was 14, was actually a product of the Toronto blessing. If you know what that is. Um, basically I, (laughs) every Sunday we'd see, you know, people being slain in the spirit and, uh, you know, holy laughter, violently shaking. (laughs) Uh, So a lot of the things that we're seeing now in the, in the bad charismatic movement. Yeah. Yeah. And that was kind of in the late 90s, I, I guess. Um, you know, Benny Hinn, that name was common in my household. My my parents went to some of his crusades. Um, I personally went to Toronto and, and experienced all that. <laughs> um, I, I guess... With my parents' testimony, I always had trouble on figuring out whether or not I was truly born again. And I was comparing my life to the stories of my parents, hmm. comparing my life to their life prior to being Christian and being like, well, I didn't, I don't do drugs. I'm not having sex. I'm a pretty good person. So I think I'm okay. Um, and it wasn't until, I guess, later on where, um, I guess through the internet, this is a common story. Um, I saw a Paul Washer video, the famous. I was going to say, <laughs> it's either Paul Washer, John Piper, or John MacArthur. <laughs> well, I saw that and that really, uh, I, I wouldn't say that i became a Christian at that point, but things became very clear and all that confusion was kind of cleared away. And I felt like even though I I heard the gospel before and asked Jesus into my heart a million times, um, it it finally clicked in a sense. And, um, you know, I, I I would always say that I can never pinpoint a moment of conversion, but I definitely notice the fruit in my life now that I have a hatred for sin and uh, a love for God and love for truth that I didn't really, I guess it's been growing over time. (laughs) Gotcha. So, Tell us a little bit about the film, like sort of give our listeners who haven't seen it a 30,000 foot couple minute synopsis of what the film's about. And, uh, and then maybe follow that up with, uh, why you wanted to make it. Yeah. So the film is called American gospel Christ alone. And that subtitle is kind of important. Um, I would say the American gospel is, I would summarize it as using anything to attract people to the faith other than Christ or the gospel. And you kind of see the same thing in the American dream where we're attracting people to our country through promises of health, wealth, and happiness, you know, our, our human desires. Um, I I think the same thing happens in politics. Mm. I mean, Politicians attract people with those same promises. Um, so the beginning of the film uh, 
is really an overview of the gospel and through the topic of moralistic preaching. Yeah. And that was something I experienced in a church later on. Um, and I really wanted to address that. Um, the, the last part of the film covers the word of faith movement um, through uh, different testimonies of people who have come out of that, including Kosti Hinn, who's the nephew of Benny Hinn, um, and a, f- a few others who have, uh, I guess, experienced pretty intense suffering in their lives. Mm. And yeah, there's really so many layers. It's hard to, um, it's hard to summarize it. So John and I talk about all the time, um, the pendulum swinging and having two extremes. One of the things in the movie is, um, cause you, you talked about, you kind of start out attacking the legalistic side of people and kind of seems to focus in kind of on the Roman Catholic idea of justification by works after grace is given. Um, so more towards the, that pendulum's over there on, you got to work your way into doing things. And then you talk about the, the film swings all the way to the other side and it talks about this word of faith movement. And it seems fr- from my perspective, like you're saying, Hey, here's these two extremes. And here's what, when you throw one out and you go to the extreme, you wind up looking at like, and so was it your goal to show those two extremes and say, Hey, we got a center here in the middle. Like what, what was the goal in showing those, just those two things? Or was that just more of a, a personal thing of things that you've walked through? It, sorry, one second. It was a, a personal thing, but I completely agree with the pendulum swing idea. Um, Joel Osteen, I believe, grew up in kind of a legalistic background. And Mm -hmm. so you'll often hear him uh, talking about how he doesn't want to be judgmental or talk about sin. Um, So I I think when people do grow up in that... um, unbalanced gospel where it's all judgment and wrath um, and without the balance of grace and God's love that they will go to that opposite extreme and in their preaching, they're going to try to be the least offensive that they can. And unfortunately that attracts non-believers and it does not help believers at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even with that, even with that, uh, that pendulum swing from moralistic or legalistic, uh, gospels, which are not really gospels to prosperity gospel, which is not really a gospel. I think there's a, there's a common thread throughout both of them, which is they're both f- focused on self. So, on the moralistic side, you're reading yourself into scripture and you're making yourself the hero of scripture and it's 10 steps to a better life or 10 steps to this or 10 steps to that there. It, it's all about your performance. Yeah. But in a very real sense in the word of faith movement, it's, it's exactly the same just with a different bent. It's all about your performance. If you don't have enough faith, you're not going to be healed. If you don't have, um, if you don't speak in tongues, then you haven't had the second blessing. And so there's this, still there's works. this, Yeah. Yeah, it still works. And there's this con, there's this thread that runs throughout that I think ties both of those extremes together with, with one commonality, which is they're, they're not resting in Christ's righteousness credited to us by faith and instead are seeking to produce something in themselves apart from Christ. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really, you know, one of the things that, that we've struggled with here. We live in a very Catholic culture here. Um, and one of the things that we've struggled with here is gospel ignorance as far as what the gospel is. Like just defining the gospel can be a difficult thing for people to do because here it's been either the, the Roman Catholic works type of thing or the moralistic therapeutic deism in preaching. And one of the things that we've discovered is people don't really have a grid for theologically Christ centered preaching. It's it's a difficult thing for them. 
a lot of the messages that I heard in my old church were uh, law, all law and no gospel. So mm-hmm. it was all about what you can do and not what Christ has done. And I think I cover that in the film. I think that law gospel distinction is extremely important. <laughs> so do we, we be a, like, I, I grew up in the same uh, type of home and my parents are believers and they, they actually attend church uh, here where I pastor. But um, one of the things that always had come across to me when I was growing up is here's the things that are expected. Uh, here's the things that if you're a Christian, uh, you're supposed to do instead of the, uh, hey, here's what God expects. You're not going to be able to do that. But isn't this good that Christ has come and he's he's given us his life so that we can, as we rest in him, as we uh, trust in him, can start to live out more of some of those expectations that everyone expects from you. And it it's like that, that message, even if the even if the gospels in there can get so veiled. Yeah. By the by the rules and by the to do's, because that's just kind of our nature is to go to, OK, what can I do? Well, and, and not only that, um, there's a there's a sense in which we don't we, we don't know how to apply the gospel in our lives. Because number one, our emphasis is not, is not the gospel because a lot of people believe that the gospel is what gets you in. Mm-hmm. And then you've got to keep yourself by your performance, which is not what the gospel teaches. The gospel teaches something different, which is and one of the things that, that you highlighted so well on the film is the transformational aspect of the heart in the gospel where I, I don't live perfectly, but I'm pursuing Christ. And as I pursue Christ and my heart is more aligned with him through trusting in him, my, my life begins to reflect that more. And I think that's where the, that's, that's the key where the power lies because the frustration comes when I'm trying to produce this on my own, I'm trying to be good on my own and I just fail over and over and over and over again. And that's why it's so crucial that we make it about the gospel and about Christ. Yeah, it's so important to understand that the gospel is for Christians too. Um, I, <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of friends I talk to, they don't really see the importance of that. They think it's like only for the non-believer, and then you kind of graduate and move on to mm-hmm. to more mature doctrine. Um, but it's really the thing that helps you um, grow in Christ, your love for Christ, so that your obedience um, is is fueled by that love. And if you don't have the gospel, in the film I kind of describe it as uh, there's a, a twin damning result where you either are prideful or in despair. Yeah. So if you're if you are being preached a be good message and that's it, you're either going to think you are good and be prideful or that you aren't and you're in despair. And you can't be. That's that's where yeah. the despair comes from. I can't be good. I've tried. Exactly. So uh, why don't we just sort of finish up with this? Why don't you. uh so I noticed it said the the title of the the movie is American Gospel Christ Alone. Are, are you going to do another one on faith alone and another one on scripture? <laughs> <laughs> well, the next one I have is actually subtitled Christ Crucified. Um what I really wanted to cover in this was the atonement and actually this was going to be one giant film and once i got into editing it i realized i'm gonna have to split this apart (laughs) because if you watch my trailer you can see there's some aspects of 
the atonement in there and liberal Christianity that did not end up in the Christ alone. Uh, I would, I guess I would call it part one. Um, so Christ crucified is going to focus more on the atonement, the attributes of God and the emergent liberal Christianity. Um, uh, I guess you could say picking and choosing uh, to ignore the uh, offensive aspects of the gospel. That's great. So I'm excited now because there's another one coming <laughs> out. We, we really, we really enjoyed the film a lot, man. We, we appreciate you making that. And uh, why don't you, why don't you go ahead and tell people how uh, it just came out on, like you can own it digitally now on, uh, was it Vimeo? Vimeo or, yeah. yeah. And then you're going to be releasing DVDs. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about how people can get a hold of this if they want to rent it or if they want to buy it. Right now, we just have a Facebook page and you can also go to Vimeo and search for American Gospel Christ Alone. It can be rented or bought. Um, in the next month or so, it'll be on iTunes and Amazon and different uh, streaming services. Uh, right now that's our plans. Um, but if you enjoy the film, please share it. Absolutely. This is a, I think this is a, an important, uh, film for, for all Christians to, to take a look at and watch. We watched it with our, uh, secretary and she had to, she had to leave halfway through it. She came in the next day. She's like, Hey, can I finish that? <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's really, it's really well done. And, and, uh, a lot of a lot of truth there. I think one of the other things that's really cool is uh, a movie like that opens people's eyes to some of the things that are actually happening. And so when yeah. when people have conversations about some of these things that are outside of the realm of their own reality of their own what they think is actually real, like no, this stuff is really happening and it's affecting a lot of people. So I, I just think it's it's great awareness, but it also just you guys did a great job of just found, uh, that foundation being tied back to the gospel, to Christ and, and trying to recenter people who are out on those fringes of those, um, of that pendulum and trying to just center them where they need to be. So yeah, I really appreciated it as well. Yeah. So thanks for being on the show, Brandon. We appreciate you. And, uh, we will be, uh, looking forward to the next movie. Thanks guys. I appreciate you having me. You bet. Well, we just want to say thanks once again to uh, Brandon for taking the time to uh, have a conversation with us and just encouraging to hear like his desire um, behind the movie was from his own experience and yeah. knowing that there's other people that are walking through that too yeah, and just wanting to bring awareness um, to other people about those two dangers that he, that he brought out in the movie. Um, I thought, I thought it was really well done. Yeah, it was really well done. We'll talk more about that next week. And, uh, this it's, it's like, let's see, by the time this airs, it'll be the end of October or it'll be the beginning of November. No, end of October. End of so October. Okay. There. Anyway, end of October, beginning of November, Christmas season is approaching. It is approaching. Which means gifts because we give gifts in Christmas time. And if you're I, looking. I, is one of your, uh, the, what's that book where you, you read it before you get married and it's got, oh, the five love languages. Yeah. Like is, is one of yours a uh, gift giving? No, but one of my love languages is gift receiving. I you enjoy sure give receiving. a lot of stuff. I give gifts to myself too. I buy myself <laughs> a lot of books. Carly. See, it's like double down. You get, to, you get to give and you get it at the same time. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And if I'm giving to myself and then receiving you it get by double myself, the you double the pleasure, <laughs> double the blessing. <laughs> no, that's one of, uh, that's one of Carly's, uh, consistent frustrations with me <laughs> is she'll, I'll say, I, I, oh, that book looks good or that looks good and, and she'll pack it away in her mind. Yeah, she'll yeah. she'll sock it away in her mind and then I show up with it 2 weeks later and I or I'll be like I just read this book it was really good. She's like, "Ah, are you kidding me?" <laughs> so anyway, uh yeah, so it's gift season. It is gift season. And you know what would make a great gift for the Christian in your life or the person that's stuck in the word of faith movement or the person that sits under moralistic therapeutic deistic preaching? Uh, is it this movie? called? It would American be this gospel? movie called American gospel Christ alone. So go buy the movie or at least rent the movie and watch it. 
Um, seriously, we don't recommend a lot of stuff. We don't recommend lightly. That's true. That is true. You're you're like a a content snob. I am a con- <laughs> I am a content. Snob. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> oh man, yeah. But uh, American Gospel would make a great Christmas gift, Carly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. He's going to buy it anyway. So don't do it. I'm going to get, I'm going to get a physical DVD copy and I've already bought the digital copy and be like, Oh, awesome. Uh, and then, oh, so next week we're, we're talking with Marino and then the, the week after that, uh, we've got another gift idea for, uh, for you that we're going to highlight. Uh, we're going to interview somebody that does something that's really cool. That would make a great gift. So I'm going to leave you with that. Suspense. It is. It is. We've got everything on this show. There's occasional humor where we mess stuff up. There's there's drama, suspense, foolishness. I don't know. There's all sorts of stuff. Anyway, um, how do how do we incorporate violence and gore into our show? I could come over there and punch you. (laughs) Do you want to do that? No. Okay. Thanks. I'm good. (laughs) Uh, You can find us on Facebook. We've got a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Please let us know what you think. If you've watched. American gospel. Let us know what you think about it. Cause we're going to be talking about that next week. And we'd love to incorporate some of your thoughts and your feedback on that and go like the American gospel Facebook page and stay up to date on future projects for them. Uh, and then you can email us at pastor discussions at gmail.com. You can call us at a phone number that's listed in the show notes. And that's it. That's it. That's it. We still so, haven't mastered this. Yeah, so the, 44 this is our, episodes in. This is our mastery. This is our thing. This is what makes We're us just us. two goofballs in <laughs> Nebraska that can't podcast, that throw something out, and you guys uh, keep you continuing just, to you listen. You just got to own it. You just I guess so. Uh, on that note, thank you for listening. We yes, appreciate you, you guys. So, um, we've and, gotten feedback from you guys and really enjoy talking with, with you guys. And yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm trying to do better at getting on the social media. I responded to somebody's comment. So Did that, you? That, that's pretty good for me. I. That's fantastic. Yeah. Normally, it's I'm the only one that's it's doing true. anything on there. Oh man! Well, right. come back next week because you get uh, it'll be doubly good because you got two Joes. Yeah, so. two Joes and one John. <laughs> so we'll finish up our conversation on this topic and this movie of the American Gospel in the next episode of the Pastor Discussions podcast. Your weekly conversation for doctrine, faith, and Christian life.